The beautiful Devon countryside, our final stop in round six. Derby weekend in the Premiership, drawing to a close here. And today another West Country instalment featuring two sides who suffered defeat last weekend. So you would imagine there'll be no shortage of bite and of drive here this afternoon. And off the back of defeat to Northampton last week, Rob Baxter's made five changes to his starting lineup. The entire front row rotated, CEO Yendel and Painter included from the off. Daphne Jenkins retained as captain at the tender age of just 20. Elsewhere, South African Aidan Davis makes his first start of the season at number eight. And Rusi Tuima back in at lock, man of the match here a fortnight ago. The back line left intact, Joe Hawkins, an exciting fresh addition to the Chiefs ranks, paired with Henry Slade, uh, enjoying some of his best form. And Tommy Wyatt doing a great job at fullback with Josh Hodge out injured. Just a couple of changes for the Cherry and Whites, despite their drubbing by Bath last Friday. Both are in the back division. Lewis Reece Samet is starting, looking to give them the X factor that they have been missing. Johnny May serving a ban, so that right wing berth open for the Welshman. Mickey Young, the other change, making a first start for the club that he joined from Newcastle just a fortnight ago. Stephen Varney dropping to the bench this week. The pack unchanged, save for a switch of position in the back row to Asui and Clement. Swapping numbers to Isui on the blind side, Clement at number eight. And remember, no Zach Mercer, Ruan Ackerman, or Val Rapava Ruskin. In terms of the battle up front, the way the game's refereed now means the old enforcer style number four isn't really a thing in rugby. Having said that, there's still a place for two physical locks who can set the tone of that physicality for the rest of their team. And Tuima and Clark both do that, offer an enormous amount around the field, but it's in the tight that they'll really power their team forward well the weather's blown fair today and so hopefully we've seen lots of attacking rugby but when I look at both sets of back threes sheer class but I can't wait to see Feo Raboso up against Rhys Samet Feo Raboso born in Cardiff eligible to play for Wales as well as England been really impressed with that young fella we know all about the world-class qualities of Rhys Samet so the Gloucester boys bruised I think it's fair to say King's home last Friday night was uh, a sorry place at full time after the derby against Bath. So good in the first 40, really taken to the cleaners in the last half hour. It won't have uh, escaped the notice of the Chiefs. We've got one or two things to address of their own, beaten at the Gardens a week ago by Saints. Particularly wobbly line out that might be targeted by George Skivington's men. So the boss man still not quite able to find the words or the explanation for the disintegration in that, that last half hour a week ago. Attitude, the one word he stressed they had to find in the aftermath. And he said that the skipper, Lewis Ludlow, hadn't slept for three days afterwards. The scarring is deep, so the response today, you would imagine, from Ludlow and co needs to be powerful, there needs to be a bit of fire and brimstone today, Ben. And challenge, though, because they started so well, so usually when you have a poor performance, it's all about how you start the next game, but that inherent doubt will still be there. If we get out to a lead, can we hold on to it? And that's the, that's the big challenge for Gloucester. We almost don't need to get out to a huge start, they need to be in it and they need to build as the game goes on and finish really strongly at the end. I guess the confusing thing, one of the confusing things was the disparity between the quality of that first 40 minutes and what followed from a, a Gloucester perspective. Maybe some fault lies there that Daphne Jenkins and the Chiefs can exploit. They've been brilliant here. Saracen, Sale and Bristol all dispatched on Devon soil. 137 points they've scored in the three games here at Sandy Park. Hundred and thirty seven points, twenty one tries in those three premiership matches, and I think it's fair to say Rob Baxter's young guns just a little bit ahead of schedule really in their rebuild, which is a, a great thing of course from their perspective, but they'll want to flex their muscles again in front of this lot here this afternoon. Prove they can be the real deal, following the illustrious footsteps of those who went before. 
Ian Tempest, our referee. Dan Jones, John Meredith, his assistants, and our TMO is Dean Richards. Thank you. It's a terrific battle Final in lights, prospect. Please, Lewis. Beautiful. Time on. November afternoon. Relatively clear skies and no breeze to speak of down there. As the ball is taken in by George McGuigan. <laughs> and Mickey Young begins to order things from the base. His first start for Gloucester, released by Newcastle over the summer. Wyatt, eaten up a lot of metres in the Premiership. No one's covered more ground in the season to this point than Tommy Wyatt. Kens with an advantage. Gloucester not rolling away. First penalty of the game then. Cagey start, as you'd expect. I see a little bit of kicking that middle third of the field. It's a cheap penalty. Referee Ian Tempest gives very, very quickly, just giving Exeter what should be excellent field position, as long as Harvey Skinner puts this into the right place. Just gets caught, doesn't he? And it's setting a benchmark for the game for Ian Tempest, isn't it? He wants a quick game with lots of ability to play away. <laughs> if you put your hands up, yeah. but you're still lying in the way, you're <laughs> it still going to get penalised. It doesn't mate. quite qualify as rolling away, does it? Just stick your arms out like Superman and hope for the best. Here's Vermeulen for the Chiefs, and Vivastro, his level best to prevent any ground being gained. Tuima, who was so good a couple of weekends ago, he's had an excellent start to the season. Fired away by Cairns and Skinner. Looks to the edge. Vermeulen can't quite hang on. And a chance for Gloucester to draw breath. A little bit of a shame that they didn't spot the late, ar late arcing run of Ben Hammersley here as he comes round just there. Maybe he just needs to open his mouth a little bit more because had Skinner just shown that long pass to Vermeulen but just left it into space, I don't think anyone would have stopped Hammersley making the break. This is the process. So we've got extra number four with blood. So we need to get some blood. Soon just on one of those four, that has been charged with bringing the abrasive edge to the Chiefs' back row. The absence of the likes of Dave Ewers and Sam Simmons. Kirsten as well, remember, Yanis Kirsten, who is regularly in that, that back five for Exeter, giving them that ballast, that go forward, that physical presence. It was a first really big carry from him, wasn't it? It was a massive hit that came in. Ooh, I think it's the second player in, isn't it? To a series fine. OK, Tempo, we need to have a check. There is it's an the element, I feel, here. They are going to check it that the hit of Tuasui actually knocks him into the zone of the second tackler. Couldn't quite see who it was. Is it Atkinson? OK, we're going to show you second player. I think it was Jack Clement's challenge, actually. Hey. And Dean Richards is going to have a little look at this to help out Ian Tempest. Tackle, first tackle's made by eight. Definitely changes the dynamic. Agreed. So foul play, high danger, mitigation because the other Gloucester player takes him across as yellow card, white eight. Yes. Thank you. Chuck Clement mark, to please, the please. bin and a setback that Gloucester just outside the 22, but eight could really do without. Across. He'll go for 10, and uh, this is well so within the range up? of. Just yeah, Harvey so Skinner, if they wanted early points from the tee. Okay, Conversation about technology, they yeah, are TMO. Yeah, it's obviously so topical in our sport as well as football. Got to say, regardless of what people think about that decision, I think it's the right one. That is dealt with so quickly, so swiftly. Very good process. The, the process is, is spot on. I, I still feel from Clement's point of view. There is zero he can do about that because he's setting himself for a different tackle. He's not that upright, but by how the referees have been told to referee it, and Tempest has gone through every checklist and arrived at his decision. Well, what opportunities present themselves here for the Chiefs? Ball is taken on by Hawkins. Slade 
in there for company, helping with the clear out. Cairns gets it away. Here's Davis. Cairns again, quick delivery. Skinner with the dummy, half through the hole. And making good ground, powered onwards by a couple of his teammates. Ethan Roots to the four. Here's Davis again, driving hard and low. Hawkins. Powerful, but also extremely elusive given any kind of space. The ball has been stripped by Gloucester and the turnover has been affected. Critical moments for the Cherry and Whites. Down a man with Clements in the bin and Barton giving them some breathing space. He hasn't got a huge distance, Barton, but he had to get the ball off the field here. Here's the strip, really good from Atkinson. Wraps the ball carrying arm with the left arm and then uses his right arm underneath to rip it down and out of the grasp but sensible kick from Barton to get it off the field and the field position remains strong from the Chiefs and for Mullen is bringing in Hawkins who's got through quite a lot of work already Hammersley goes to ground Davis Driving hard into Barton, and once again, Seb Atkinson doing his level best to hold his man up in the choke tackle. That's a couple of really good competitions on the ball there. Gloucester actually end up turning this one over. Exeter just lower numbers. Well, for the second time, five metres out, Gloucester have nicked the ball. And here's Thorley, good stepping, good power, and Barton really should hold on to that. Just a couple of instances of good decision-making. We often see teams give away penalty at the breakdown. Watch George McGuigan here. He actually doesn't quite get this one right. His hands go past the ball, then he comes back onto it. He's not, and look at him showing the referee, I'm not playing it. That allows them at the next phase to go hard at a breakdown that's not particularly well-resourced. Maybe came in slightly from an angle there, time off, got away with it, down. but it's just that right decision-making at the right time. Really good from McGuigan, could have easily gone, well, I'm sort of on the ball, I'll keep having a go at it, giving away a penalty under his sticks. Well, they're having to dig pretty deep early on here, Hugo. You, you suspect they will have been so stung by the King's Home experience a, a week ago. We, we know how keenly players like Lewis Ludlow feel those sort of evenings losing a man Done. early on Done. but having to reach into their resources please. early on yeah one way showing your attitude through your defense they'll feel as if they're having to do too much defending extra often monopolized attack don't they 77 percent of the possession but gloucester need to get hold of the ball they need to get themselves a penalty get out of their half but so far they've looked robust that man there he'd have loved to receive the pass at this stage but so far, I think George Gibbons and the coach will be happy with the attitude shown in the opening five minutes. Well, Lee Samet's inclusion from the off, absolutely essential from a Gloucester perspective. When you need a spark, then very often someone like Rhys Zamet can provide it. And, and it just has felt in the last couple of weeks as if Gloucester have been lacking that little bit of X factor to, to separate them. I agree. As well, the other thing, apart from the actual sparks that we see, as you said, it's also the fact that it, it occupies the mental ram of the opposition. They're constantly just aware that Rhys Zamet's on the field, and if a ball bobbles to him, it's good night with his pace. So just maybe that psychological factor of having someone like Louis Rees Samet on the field. I'll do as we agreed inside, lads, OK? You do as you agree, please. Ellie, I'll try my best. I really like the way in which Exeter Chiefs use their 10, 12 and 13. You can see Harvey Skinner directly behind this scrum. But when you look at the heavyweight that they've got in the centre, Joe Hawkins in the middle there, then Henry Slade. They'll often look to get the ball to Hawkins, who can stand up in the tackle, as well as using his hands. Harvey Skinner wants to come round the back. Plenty of options if they can get this ball out. 
And there it is for Cairns, and away they come through Hawkins being dragged up to within five metres. Cairns fires it out, Davis stopped on the gain line. Good stuff from Gloucester defensively to this point, but a barreling run from Jenkins. Leading from the front to Ima. Still they go to that short side, and now Wyatt tries to slip the ball to Hammersley, and it's gone forwards in the act of the offload. And um, it will be a scrum five metres out. I really like what White is trying to do. You can see he's just trying to slide outside and in between and the ball out the back. I mean, it's ri oh, that's play on. That's been carried back by Gloucester, hasn't it? You see what he's trying to do, but just in terms of the situation, Exeter is so good when they can get through those phases. Perhaps better just to look after that ball, not chance that 50-50, and Exeter do what Exeter do. That old 50-50 thing from coaches. If you're on your line, a 50% chance of scoring is pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. So we don't see many tries in, in the in a game. 50%. I'll take that. I like him trying it, and in fairness, been picked up by the assistant referee, and it is still Exeter's ball five metres out. Yeah, the intervention of Carreras. Crouch! Lord dies off on the break. Bind! Set! Chiefs desperately keen to put some points on the board for all this pressure. It's a scrum penalty this time, and they might ask for more of the same or pop it into the corner. Scrum cold. Good decision, I think. So you give Gloucester an option, an option of just going up and putting pressure and forcing an error there. You can see Exeter very happy camp down here. Second in the red zone efficiency, but the scrum now puts pressure on the referee, puts pressure on those Gloucester front rowers. Having given away one penalty, I think the right call from Exeter to leave it at a scrum. That shove is looking pretty meaningful from the Chiefs. Away goes Cairns, dummies, and is caught by Mickey Young. It's there, though, for Jenkins, the captain, taking matters into his own hands, and Ian Tempest is not convinced. I think this is a brilliant bit of defensive work. Okay, fine. I thought they got to the line, that's why I stopped it. Dino, just give us a restart, please, mate. Okay. See the tries being as good. So, around the time off. The ball was there, tempting for Daffy Jenkins, no one in around that guard area. So, it was the right option from Jenkins just to pick and go. But I think, and I've not seen a replay yet, they may have just. Let's have a look at this. Oof. To see whether he's actually over the line, don't we? Clark doesn't quite get that left hand under, I don't think, but we'll have to see an angle. It might come down to the question that's been asked. He hasn't seen a grounding, so it's not ruling it out, it's ruling it in. Tricky one for Dean Richards, this. I think he's If, I think if the referee had said any reason not to award it, this would be a try. It's going to have to have a bit more evidence. I think he does get there, but whether there's enough to say conclusively he does. Tempo, yeah. I'm no conclusive evidence for a try, um, so grounded before. Um, yes, I want to go scrum five. Scrum. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing clear on the screen, it's going to be a scrum five, extra ball, not conclusive. As you were, back we go for the no scrum. Try. It's one scrum. of those that, um, without the benefit of several different angles and replays in every other rugby match across the land it would have been awarded in an instant you suspect but Chiefs have got to go to work again and try and get the job done in a slightly cleaner fashion so Gloucester for all their defensive heroics is open in 10 minutes what they get five meter scrum 
They've been hounded in the scrum so far, and Exton, this pick-and-go game is relentless. It's the boys having to go to the well once again. I just wonder whether Jack Yandall, Aaron Pater, Scott Seer might have just had a word with the back of the scrum and just said, just don't be in quite as much a rush to get it out. Might force the referee into saying something to Gloucester if it starts to go backwards. There's the control from the Chiefs. It's there for Davis. Cairns is being instructed to use it, and Cairns breaks. Once again, he's just a little bit short. Once again, it's Mickey Young stopping him, but this time, this time, surely the Chiefs are over. Patience there, watchwords. And ultimately, finding that execution in the form of Rusi Tuima. Yeah, really good knowledge of where the space is going to be. First, they drive the back row of Gloucester away. Cairns might have offloaded that to Skinner, but it doesn't matter because they come back to the area where the Gloucester front five are retreating. Really good knowledge of where the weakness is going to be. Gloucester can't get back, having been under pressure in the scrum. They're still backtracking. Toima's running onto it. He's got all the momentum, and when you've got that size behind that momentum, there's only going to be one result. Brilliant start from the Chiefs. Not a bad strike rate either, is it? Five in 13 for the youngster. Man of the match against the Bristol Bears uh, a fortnight ago. And with a, a very keen rugby pedigree. Nephew of Akapusi and Guerra, of course, who was for, for a long time the open side for Chiefs opponents today, Gloucester. Seven points to the goods. Exeter Chiefs. And with one minute still to play out on the Jack Clement yellow, they've made the most of their one-man advantage. So difficult, particularly for those front row boys that get targeted by Tawima. All that pressure from the scrum still burning in their legs. They're backtracking, can't quite get into their position. A lot of it result, revolves around the speed of ball from the Chiefs as well, just making sure they can take that advantage. Well taken by uh, Hawkins, out of the sunlight. <laughs> Carreras jogs forwards. And that's Exeter Chiefs' fourth tackle this game. Fourth. No. Pretty happy with that rate. <laughs> 12 minutes gone. Barton standing stock still. They're miles behind the gain line. A little bit fortunate. Faiwa Bosa was a bit quick out of the line. And uh, Fawley's able to make hay. Beyond the 10 metre for the Cherry and Whites. McGuigan holds it back for Barton again. It just looks a, a little bit clunky, but they do have possession in an important area of the field. That's good from McGuigan. Fawley again, I mean, to gather it behind himself. Barton, little dab forwards, off goes Rhys Zammett in hot pursuit, and it's gone past Wyatt, but the, there's support there, important support from Hawkins. And he's got it in behind Barton. Wait. Barton again, a lot of space in the backfield away to the right, but across comes Skinner. Almost goading Barton into sending it there. Now he might exploit that five metre channel. Hammersley set free. Lots of space for the winger. Had to get that pass away first time, you feel. Chancing his arm. And why not? An excellent counter attack from the Chiefs. Yeah, absolutely. Extra motor at the moment. But Gloucester, surely they found a blueprint similar to what we saw last week. Look at how high and how tight Exeter get. That's one break on Waboso's wing here. Oli Fawley just eating up those yards. A couple of times they do that. Then Chiefs get their moment. Got to get your kick chase. And then Hammersley on this occasion trying to link up, throws the dummy, then tries to give the ball away. There is space in those outside channels. The only thing lacking, just a tiny bit of accuracy. Clement 
is back with us. And he's looking to lead the charge, having had his time on the naughty step. No. Here comes Ben Hammersley, just his fourth Premiership start. 21 years old, he might just have given that a tiny bit too much. And they're going to come a long way back as a consequence. Made his Premiership debut last month. Really strong leadership needed here from Gloucester now. First real attacking opportunity. Have to get a significant passage of play here. Just a big carry into midfield. Just spend a little bit of time in control down in the extra half. Delivered by Ludlow. Barton running onto that nicely and uh, Atkinson sends it wide. Carreras dabs it forwards. Foley sets off and he's interested in this. Oh! No, 50 22 pass. Back to the ball infield there could have made it interesting. Just nice lacking a bit in. of zip. Pass Everything in, just it. slightly pass laboured. We're only talking a couple of percent just of things from really connecting, actually making line breaks. This delivery off the top, Michael Young, whip that, why? And then this pass here, just the inaccuracy, you've beaten the press, and now you stop Carreras to ask to kick that ball away. That could have been a potential line break. Instead, it's really good territory, but it should be territory with their possession. Exeter's exit plan going to plan for the moment. And once again, they're sending Joe Hawkins into the fray. You sold something again, I'm going to penalise you. Thank you. Tuasui heads on into the backfield for Gloucester alongside Carreras and Foley, and Love Chiefs that. have uh, spotted that, and they're going to have a little crack before the ball is... You're belted into touch players. via Henry Slade. I thought they were going to keep that ball in hand there, Ben. You threw it out I think they were that. just having right. a look, weren't they? Maybe they've spotted something in their video analysis, but just that call coming late, Henry Slade. And then they Number wipe the ball across the field and see how prepared Gloucester are to bring one of their back three members up to close off that run. If they come up, no they kick over. It was not the best execution of the kick, but they kick over their heads. If they stay back, they take them on with ball in hand. Barton to the line and Rizamit. First touch, ball in hand, but no space. Here's McGuigan. Young. Fancy. Space opening up here for Offside. him and he's got it away to Tuasui. That one okay. is off. Oh, deliciously picked up by Carreras. They found the space now. Fancy and here's Rizamit, the danger man. Carreras, that's gone forwards. Oof, that promised so much. How nice, when they just come alive with just a bit of unstructured rugby, how good they look. And it's the key protagonist getting the hands of the ball. Mickey Young, lovely little offload. Chicken wing there from Tuasui. And then this, just in that five metre channel, Reese Sabbath off the right, keeps the ball alive. Just one too many passes, but I love the invention. I love the first offload from Carreras. And then the Reese Sabbath one is absolutely bang on because he takes it. He could have easily, easily taken one more step there and just held on to it for a fraction, but as the tackle came in, gave the best possible chance of a, a, a try. Unfortunately, the last offload, not yeah. quite up to it. Not quite there, was it? And um, trouble brewing for Gloucester with an injury to Albert Tuasui. They'll be very keen to patch him up and get him back out there quick, smart. Obviously, the... The big injuries have come in, uh, particularly in the pack for Gloucester, with, with Zach Mercer, their big new signing, and, and Ruan Ackerman, who has been a fixture for them over the course of the last three or four seasons, a carrying monster. I mean, he gets through a mountain of work. Not just back row, but they're all a similar player in the back row. So they would have wanted Mercer and Ackerman to be their big ball carriers. When they're not available, Tuasui is exactly in the same mould. So. Okay. Just the stocks of the people that can give them that initial go forward is really starting to diminish. And 
uh, it does not look particularly promising at this point okay. for the big Fijian. Yeah. Freddie Thomas is warmed up and ready to go. And he will come on for Albert Tuasui. That is a, a very significant setback for Gloucester. Really lacking those those carriers of which Tuasui is a critical part. He throw Rapava Ruskin in there as well as another absentee. And when you couple his his power with the deft handling skills, you, you lose a really vital cog in the wheel. Add to that his ability over the ball as well. Often really good at not necessarily making the turnover, but slowing the opposition down. Yeah, there were four of those last week against Bath for Tuisui, but Thomas into the back row. Scrum doesn't look like it's moving anywhere anytime soon. Away from Davis. And uh, interesting how they're using Joe Hawkins. He's been really good in the opening few minutes of this game. A bit more of a direct carry there, but often goes on, goes really straight and then just steps to the outside channel at the last minute. Just gives them a shoulder to work around for the next phase. Knock on. Might just have been knocked on by Ben Hammersley. And Gloucester have a, a sniff here. They can gather it in cleanly. Buttons no advantage. Grappling. No advantage. The scrum for the moment. Just one of the uh, the three active Exeter University students playing in the starting 15 for for the Chiefs today. Ben Hammersley. Tom Cairns also. Daffod Jenkins and. Chris Chunza as well at the moment injured, but it's providing a, a vital supply line for Exeter. The links are so strong and you feel like that could be a model moving forwards for the English game, Ben, if they progress it. It's really important. So there, there are probably off-field uh, connections that are really good in, in, when, when you make those, those bridges with the universities, but particularly for, for the young players coming through. Giving them something else to focus on apart from the rugby, I think, is a really, really good thing for all those success stories of the guys that are actually playing today or, or in that first team squad. There are the ones behind that won't make it. And they're not just having three, four years as a professional rugby player with nothing to take away from the game as well. So really smart. Free kick at the scrum awarded to Gloucester. They've had a chance to have another one. Yeah, they've this had a couple to fix, not mine, lads. Okay, so you both have free kicks. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. They've had a couple of experiences now of Exeter in this blitz. Had a look at Waboso, the right winger for Exeter, how high and how tight he gets. So it's so important that Gloucester in their attack that they use their appropriate depth. Barton fairly flat to line, just behind him resummit. If they can. If they can just get, get extra on their toes and allow Reece Amit enough time, he's got enough pace to get on the outside if they can get this ball out. Scrums are oh, shambles. Yeah, it's, um, it's proving problematic, but Ian Tempest has penalised the Chiefs. And it's a full-blown penalty this time. And it's gone against Aaron Painter for not driving straight. Three. Yeah. Square. In a rush to get the penalty, Painter there he had the dominance, but maybe felt the ball. He wasn't going to get his reward. Slides across. <laughs> Trying to at least pull that back, lost the back row away, get his back row on the front foot. Get yours for a little. Now then, Gloucester positioning Reese Zamet right next to. Barton, line out is secured by Ludlow, and here they come through Clark. Quick offload for Chris Harris to crash forwards. 13, roll if you want to jackal. With a penalty advantage, here's Clements. And a, 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 what looked like a, a nasty collision for McGuigan. Yeah. Four, yeah. We need to check uh, contact by Black. Four, please. <laughs> Time off. 
This I've got is, penalty um, at 13, not rolling. I've now got TMO intervention by Blackball. Time off, please, Dino. Yeah. That's Rossi Tuima they're talking about. McGuigan's not the ball carrier. You're the screw. He's latched on. It's head on head, so he hasn't made head contact with the ball carrier. He probably shouldn't. I, I, okay. I think that's a rugby incident because all his focus is on the ball Looking carrier. Black four, it's on, not on the ball carrier, though, so we just got to double check. Last, that's fine, he's the last. He's leading. Okay, Dino, punch three, that four minute point of contact, please. We're coming in. It's just coming. Now. He's looking to make a tackle. He's got right. Just coming. Sorry? I'm on foul play, he's got a little late tackle there. He's then connected to the player's head, so I'm on foul play here. Look, we're going to actually oh, drive on into my, the contact. My argument here would be, why is McGuigan not under review here? If he's so reviewing so Tuima for doing it. So far on field for me, we've got head, head contact, yeah? Yep. We've got foul play, he is looking to make a tackle. I know it's not on the ball carrier, it's on the latcher, but we do have foul play. But the latcher's up right. Tackle. Yes. OK, I want to see it again, just looking at mitigation and level of danger here, mate, because this now depends what colour card they're going in at. Yep. It's coming. Hmm. And one more time, Dean. Okay. That Lalacha's head comes up. He goes upright. Yeah, that's, Boy, that's what I was upright, so saying initially. Yeah, that, yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. Dean Richards has so isolated that point. Yeah. Okay, there's lots of movement. I'm into the yellow card here. I'm going to stay the yellow card. Yes. Okay, number four. Number four, yeah. Yeah, I know. But he's upright from the tackle, so it's still a yellow card. But probably not going to hide danger. Ten minutes in the bin for Tuima. He's still upright, has to tackle lower. So a card, card each way here at Sandy right, Park this afternoon. Here, one over there, and lower. Gloucester on the attack will smell blood. It's just beyond the 15. OK, thank you, let me out the way. Time on. One of the trickier decisions, that one. And we'll come back to it in a moment, perhaps, as Harris drives on for Gloucester. Young waits over it. Here's Clements. A really strong season to this point, Jack Clement. Young. For Seb Atkinson, he's being held by Ethan Roots. Pops up for Young again. And terrific defending from those in black, pouring heart and soul into this defensive effort. Out it comes now, Atkinson, Barton, space on the outside, Rhys Summers going to have to gather on the bounce, and the ball just wouldn't sit for him from Carreras. Got to be better connected there, lads, in terms of when you use your forwards and you use your backs, that's really nice in terms of setup, but that's a really tough pass, 25 metres off your left hand. The reality is... If Rhys Summit is 10 metres away from Carreras, he still scores the try. Yeah. And, and actually, Carreras isn't under that much pressure, is he? I totally agree. Yeah, Rhys Summit, if he's a little bit closer in, he's got the pace to Let's use go. that and get back to the, to the corner when he finishes. Sorry, sorry. Really interesting conversation, that one, isn't it? <laughs> Between Carreras and Rhys Summit. Rhys Summit fuming that the pass wasn't good enough. And no doubt Carreras just, just suggesting what you were saying, Hugo. You come a little bit tighter, you've still got the pace to burn him on the outside. If I was Rhys Hammett, I'd be having a go at Carreras as well. But the reality is, I think it's my fault. Like, you review that. If he's 10 metres closer, he scores that try. Crouch! Take pressure off your players when you can. Fine! He's 10 years... Don't you he's... just hate wings? Oh, <laughs> good. Of course you'd be blaming everyone else. <laughs> Behind the ball! Big scrum from Exeter, they've drawn the dividends as well, his roots. And a scything line, this time from Slade. Cairns is caught, back we go for the scrum penalty. Under pressure without Tuima on the field. And Exeter displaying their character, their result. He's a good painter as a signing. He wasn't always... It's taken him a while to, to get to that the level that he's at when he was at Northampton and 
Rob Baxter's absolutely backed him, hasn't he? Big signing for him, and he said, I'm going to, I, I really believe in you and your ability to. We know Rob Baxter's views on the scrum and how important it is. And he's, he's, he's found the best scrummaging tight head available, and he's 100% backed him. Yeah, made it very clear what his duties are. They are as a, a technician. Doesn't want him playmaking at first receiver, particularly. Not at the moment, anyway. Might come later in his development. More. It's interesting what Gloucester are doing off this defensively the second time now. They've now got Mickey Young in the backfield and away from it. Hawkins, good acceleration again. This time he's being held up by Seb Atkinson, but the ball is away. And uh, Tommy Wyatt is bustling his way forwards. The ball dislodged by the challenge of Harris. And Gloucester will have to put into the scrum. If not the first, definitely the second. Not a bad partner for Painter to have on the other side of the scrum as well. Young lad, fairly well experienced. Let's <laughs> go. Yeah, Scott Sio, just the just the 74 caps, couple of World Cups. Yeah, phrase, come on. Let's go, 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 and uh, he's got the job done for Gloucester here. Barton bringing in Carreras, but the, the line speed and the defensive sharpness really good from Exeter and Slade in particular. Clement decides to play that on he the let ground. Go of the ball and then didn't get back up to push it back, so he's been a bit fortunate there. Yeah, very lucky, I would say. Young looking for distance. Wyatt hugging that touchline. And uh, that's gone out on the breeze from outside the 22. So a, a couple of kicks from the young Exeter back line that haven't quite found the mark. That was a, always a tough challenge with zero angle. Yeah. Wind is pretty minging down here tonight as well, in fairness. If you look at the referee's assistance flag, it's blowing quite heavily. Yeah, it's picked up a bit into Gloucester's face, so the Chiefs need to make the most of this really do you can see in terms of their efficiency playing against 40 men they are the worst in the league advantage tackling the nine after he's passed barton and gloucester have options tackling the nine after he's clearly passed so a discipline letting down the chiefs this time inviting upon themselves ball's gone silly penalty well i know how that feels tackling the nine after he's clearly passed <laughs> You stayed up longer. Yeah, do you think? <laughs> no. <laughs> it's been close on a few occasions. That time he's clearly passed. Right. Cherry and white time. Surely they have to be thinking about coming away with something from here. I haven't had the best of territorial possession, but... Now they're deep in the 22. Need that conversion. Once again, Reese Samet assembles menacingly behind the line out. And here he is gathering it one handed and charging into Skinner. Big hand off and sets it up for Young. And here's Clements! Great line! Powerful running. And an excellent finish to bring Gloucester right back into this. Yeah, really, really good. A couple of good things in it, particularly the Reese Samick carry and how he uses that leg power to give himself the extra drive through Skinner. That gets his forwards on the front foot. And then the decoy line back against the grain from Harris just to pull, hold those two defenders together, create the hole for Clement. Expertly worked. Really nice. And Henry Slade. 
thinks he's marking Ludlow. Roots gets held just for a fraction by Harris's line and can't get back out into the channel. Well, much needed for sure from the Gloucester number eight, a try scorer in the opening round against Harlequins. So the speed of the ball once Reece Samet went to ground meant that Exeter couldn't reorganise. Good carry, but just look at the speed of this delivery now. This is what makes it. I'll tell you, it was so impressive after having to defend for so long to then get their opportunity, convert that energy and get points on the board. Let's have a word with uh, with Don Walduck, part of the coaching setup with Gloucester, of course. Don, I'm delighted with that score, no doubt. What's your reading of the opening half hour or so? Well, I, th I think you touched on it just earlier. Um, you know, uh, Exeter to begin with made the most of their territory when they were in our, in our 22 uh, with that try. And before that play, we probably hadn't done that. And uh, but it's great to get get that finish, get that try on the board, and, and an excellent executed play. Just give us a little flavour of, of the week that you've had, Dom, off the back of what happened last Friday. I know this must have been a, a, a difficult time, a very awkward last half hour at, at King's Home. Just just how much has it fired proceedings in preparation for today? Well, I, I think we recognised after the game um, that we. We didn't live to the, the principles, the values that we're about as a group. Um, what, what's underpinned the, this whole process under 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 George, um, and that's that's played out through the week. We we didn't we probably we questioned our work rate, our energy, our fight, uh, which is stuff we really stand for. So um, yeah, we tried to really bring that alive this week. Tom, you've shown plenty of that so far in the opening 30 minutes. We've seen the pictures clearly presented for Exeter. How do you get round this Exeter press in attack? Well, it's, it's a big challenge. It's a big challenge. You've got to hold depth. Um, you've got to, you've got to be really accurate with your passing game. And I think we've created opportunities on the outside. Probably haven't really burnt them yet because of because of our accuracy um, at, at the moment. Whose fault was it, Reece Abbott or Carreras? <laughs> it's not a blaming game. Is it? <laughs> Thanks very much, Don. Appreciate it. Cheers, guys. You can ignore him. Thank you, Andrew. Time on. Can we? <laughs> That's such an unfair question, Hugo. Interesting to, to just pinpoint that, the accuracy of the passing. It's, it's fairly clear and obvious, but to hear it from the coaching staff, that's the one thing they really want to see sharpened up. Might just change the complexion a little bit here as Chiefs pour forward through Slade and Hawkins, who's... Very well caught by Hammersley. Hawkins, though, gathers again. He's very industrious, pops up in all kinds of places. Cairns to the boots. And hasn't got the distance on that he'd have been after. Carreras down the middle. Wyatt. Racing forwards and looking to straighten. Big shot coming in from Seb Atkinson. Good choice, good choice. Space opening up here, big overlap. And uh, Harvey Skinner decides Fifth, yes. to go to the boot. There were at least four men outside him, and Reece Samet can just watch that and dot it down. Hugo, thoughts on that choice? We had lots of opportunity on without too much time because there was an overlap. There certainly was an overlap. You'd have, looked, you'd have liked to have seen it perhaps just one extra pass because the kick was always on. But either way, they're going to get this ball back now. They've got your jujitsu, mate. Roots at the back of the pitch now. Tawim is back on the pitch to try and truck this one back up. OK. I learned a lot that day. <laughs> Mostly not to pick a fight with somebody about four <laughs> times bigger than me. Here he is. Here he is. Freeze up, freeze up. Boom. <laughs> oh, tackle away! Not much give in that body, I can test as Slade comes through on a lovely angle. Slade here, laying it on a plate for the skipper. Jenkins for Exeter. It's his first premiership try. And it's glorious from Henry Slade.
We don't see much of that line anymore, but it's devastating when done as Henry Slade does it, hiding on the wrong side of the breakdown. So those guard defenders can't see him and they go and start to push and then Skinner, the little dummy inside to drag those guard defenders even more and he stays as close as he can to the breakdown. No way the guard defenders from the other side can recover and he comes on that arcing angle, straightens up and puts in a devastating pass. Really good support play from Jenkins as well. It's a really, really good try. Well, he's a high-class player, even at this very, very young age, just 20. He's already amassed 12 caps for Wales, played in the World Cup quarter-final, of course, against Argentina. And with the captaincy bestowed upon him by Rob Baxter as well, you, you just get an indicator as the sort of bloke that he is, the kind of character that, that the boss has identified, somebody to lead the Chiefs through the next 10 years, potentially. Thanks, oh, veered away wickedly off the tee. It's just the yeah, one place you. that a defensive line can't stay connected because there's a breakdown between the two players. So those players that go forward on the ball playing side, the other players either have to make a decision to go forward and drift across, in which case they keep that back, that, that gap, or they drop underneath and they haven't got the pace to take on someone like Henry Slade and they miss the tackle. Hawkins got an almighty boot it really is huge and he's taken play almost up to the 10 meter line just one of the Thank you. attributes that the Welshman has at his disposal just see why he's been identified as such a, a startling young talent another coup of a signing as well isn't it uh, there's a lot of people in Wales that would want to keep him there for obvious reasons, but Exeter really benefiting. Always moving in five. Young. Atkinson goes wide to fool. He has to drop to one knee to gather it and then pile those black shirts. And there's problems everywhere for Gloucester. Exeter have it through Wyatt. Cherry and White's just not taking care of their own ball and Chiefs looking to pounce here. Hammersley hurtling after this one. Atkinson has done enough for Gloucester. White slow enough. It's White slow enough, fellas. It's your ball. There's Alamano, one more pass to Clement, really good leg drive from Clement. Powerful stuff, but the ball has gone forwards and Exeter have chances now. Big chances inside the Gloucester 22 and really Hugo all stemming from the inability to hang on to their own ball exactly. here. Exactly, it's just one poor pass, you can see where the space is, the picture is great, but you love that 20-30 to Ollie Thorny. It's a really good collision for Faye Boso. Fantastic counter ruck, and they turn the ball over. Then they get an opportunity to try and clear their lines. Are they looking at that clear out? To ben, the one that went, went beyond the ball. Yeah. I think they're talking about the scrum. So the one you're talking about, isn't it, Ali? Really good counter up from him, but he takes Carreras a long way past the breakdown. Well, important moments these. Especially two minutes for half time. 12 7 at half time for Gloucester, considering their accuracy and attack. You take it. Now they've gifted Exeter the scrum 12 metres out. Gonna try here. The well deserved for Chiefs. Just look how tight Chiefs are in and around the back of the scrum there. 
And then Faye Wabosa all the way out here, just trying to say to Gloucester, get as tight as you want, because you haven't got a mu much room. So if it does come out, just imagine Hawkins running that hard line off it, using his footwork ball potentially behind the back to Hammersley or Skinner arcing round to use Slade. Lots and lots of decisions to make in defence from Gloucester. And all done in a really tight channel, so the speed of that decision-making has to be perfect. As soon as you widen those gaps between the players, you've got a little bit more time to make those decisions. Mate, I'll tell you what, the only decision you've got to make, five minutes off the try the line, is get off the line and put their skills under pressure in the same way Chiefs have been doing against you. Rizamit's come in at 10, get off the line. It's there for Cairns, not the delivery that the Chiefs were after, and there's work to be done for Hawkins, and Gloucester had done that first job, pushed them back just a little bit behind the gain line at the very least. Cairns again for Chiefs. He's got to find his way through, but Freddie Thomas is blocking his path, and Balmain makes the tackle. Skinner, Wyatt, lovely show of the ball, he's got close. Ball is there to be won, and uh, Freddie Clark, I think, probably could have had a fair crack at that, but he waited just a bit too long. And the Chiefs pile over the line. Just felt like there was a window of opportunity for Freddie Clark, and he was always being too well behaved. Just a hesitation. You don't want to give away a penalty there, do you? I suppose that's in his mind. Come back for the original knock on. As you said, Ali, not the delivery they wanted from the back of the scrum. That put huge pressure on Cairns. He couldn't get his pass away to... It was Harvey Skinner that was coming round. Hawkins on that hard line. It was going to go behind his back. Do they do the same move here? Or does Hawkins get it this time? It's a big pressure game now. Mickey Young did a real good job of trying to disrupt that ball. He's got to be all over this. Scrum has been good for Chiefs, but get out. If you can stop it at source, you help your back line out, you help your forward back out. Let's go then, lads. Huge experience, Mickey Young, of course. New to Gloucester, but not to the Premiership. His 175th appearance in the top flight today. Long-time servant of Newcastle, of course. Spells with Leicester and Bath as well. Crouch. Been there, done it in this league. Bind. Set. Trying to get the better of the man, 13 years his junior. Good pressure from the Gloucester scrum. Cairns, though, puts them on the front foot, and here comes Slade. Ball dislodged, Hammersley couldn't hold it. Good work from the Gloucester defence, and that will cheer them as they head to the dressing rooms because they've been under a lot of pressure through the course of this first 40 minutes and yet they are still very much within touch. Two tries for the Chiefs through Rusi Tuima and Dathith Jenkins. Gloucester have scored through Jack Clement and it is anybody's game here at Sandy Park. Half-time, Exeter 12, Gloucester 7. No further changes to either side. Just that one that was imposed on Gloucester with Albert Tuasui's removal through injury. Freddie Thomas wearing 20 for the Cherry and Whites. And Rob Baxter fresh from delivering the messages to the Chiefs. Plenty to do, but the game very much still in the balance. And I think as the guys were saying, Gloucester will be cheered by the fact that they're as close as they are having weathered quite a lot and put in a couple of very big defensive shifts, particularly right at the start of the contest and right at the end of that first half. Absolutely, Ali. We're not talking about a side that aren't creating. If they weren't creating anything, then that's a way bigger issue than the fact that there have been some pitches and there have been some opportunities. It's just that final touch. I'm of the strong opinion the hardest thing to do in the game is to score tries. Not just because I'm a former winger, but the very best in the business are able to do that relentlessly, aren't they? Absolutely right, that box kick has gone very high but not very far, and it's there for Young. Balmain 
rather a surprised party to receive that, but he's done enough to wrestle the ball back. And here's the Gloucester try scorer Clement. Wyatt hit hard on landing. Oh, he did really well to get through the traffic. It was a good cover in front of Wyatt from Exeter. He did really well to smash the man as he landed. Jenkins cut off at the ankles by Lewis Ludlow. And at the moment, two sides trading box kicks. Interesting to read the, uh, the vice chairman of World Rugby even debating the notion that the the caterpillar ruck and the box kick in the middle of the field might be something that uh, the lawmakers take a look at as regards trying to in ensure that the entertainment levels are as high as they can be during any given 80 minutes. There's no At the moment, there's no benefit to playing in the middle third and that's why we're seeing teams do it. So you've either got to reward teams better that are trying to play or you've got to penalise them or at least give the side receiving these sort of box, <coughs> box kicks an advantage if they do take them cleanly. I'm just looking for that error. Once again, Thorley's chase is really strong and uh, the ball is there to be won. It's been won by Mako Vivas of Gloucester, clawed down by Roots. Barton having to send these very long miss passes out to Carreras, who goes cross-field, and that's out on no the full, advantage. and back for the advantage that the Cherry and Whites had previously. We mentioned Thanks, Freddie Clark in our head-to-head -head at the beginning of the game. Here's that initial Hold on. hit again from Thorley Clark. Too much to ball. In there, supporting Clement over the ball. <laughs> Decent turnover, that one. Displaying a, a range of skills today, Jack Clement. That, that's the that benefit please. of two players hunting together to go for the turnover. So Clark there no. just oh, gives him that ballast ball. behind him, behind him. Clement almost ball, sitting yeah, on Clark's knee to okay, anchor him into position. So when that initial support player comes in and hits it as hard as he can, he hits a brick wall that doesn't shift. Clement can st still hang on to the ball and come up with a turnover. Barton drives Gloucester forwards. And he's put them in in pole position inside that 22. There'll always be a debate around that 10 shirt at Gloucester, of course. Options are there for George Skivington to use Santi Carreras in that role. But he wants to develop Barton, and he also firmly believes that Carreras sees more of the ball in space from 15. That's the logic behind those selections from the... Lost a DOR. Now then, what might they manage from here? Thorley with a, a typically muscular run. Young to Clements again, just dropping that shoulder and driving into the black shirts. Lovely tip on from Clark, and Newas couldn't hold it, and away comes oh, Wyatt. It's a little wild. Vantage over. This. This was almost identical to Gloucester's, Gloucester's try. First of all, Thorley carries hard, gives them the extra leg drive, gets them on the front foot, and then as with the try, a decoy runner, runner running back and Clement on the arc. So there goes Harris on the decoy behind his back. This time dealt with better, not quite as close to the line, but it's a, it's a ploy that's worked once for Gloucester <laughs> already, trying to drag that defender yeah, okay. back to Harris and open the, open the door for Clement to go through. And once again, just lacking that little bit of accuracy, you go. Exactly. It's best demonstrating the red zone efficiency. Not quite where it needs to be, but they'll take so much courage from the fact they, they are sorry, creating a huge amount. Barton to the line and through the line. And um, the ball oh, caught on to brilliantly by Freddie Thomas. Oh, my gosh. And then it's gone forwards inside the 22 fine. from forward. Jack Clement. Just when you that think they're fine. firing. I mean, this, this is lovely from Barton, putting his head down, spotting the space. That just about sticks, you thinking, one quick ruck. You've got Reece Abbott, quickest lad on the pitch with all the space in behind, but that's really, really nice. I love the fact that they are chancing their arm, but you also, I hate using the word risk, 
but you've got to understand the flow of a game and when things haven't clicked you don't want to reinforce a message which has been there predominantly in the first half creating lots not finishing that's an unfortunate another example Thomas there though, to, to not only catch that ball but have the awareness to lift it back up right into the channel Right, eyes off. 14th scrum of the day, which perhaps is an indicator of the, um, the handling issues that both sides have been afflicted by at various different moments. The mark and not too much weight before the ball comes in. Is that clear? OK, let's go again. Reset. Let's reset. Let's go. Let's go. Form off. Let's go. This time, time in the game, just start thinking about where some of the substitutions might be able to add an impact into this game. There's a lot to come on. Dan Frost is a real live wire when he comes off the bench. We'll lift Exeter equally. You'd expect Stephen Varney to maybe offer a little bit more around the base as a running threat than you would from uh, Mickey Young. So there's some options for the, for the bench if they feel that this game needs setting a light a little bit, which we certainly feel. <laughs> with the, uh, the little dummies oh, of the open the side. side and Slade goes long. Reece Zamet undone by the strange shape ball and a good chase from Hammersley putting all the pressure on the Welsh winger. He's never felt he was fully comfortable underneath that. Very hard chasing back, trying to take it over the shoulder anyway, Hugo. It's a brilliant kick from Henry Slade. He's gone 22 to 22 landed it in the five meter channel and then it's backed up by really good chase from Hammersley you know he gains all of that territory pressure thrown now for Gloucester having to try and clear their lines from their 22. McGuigan to Clark to Young and they would have stolen that I think just didn't it, not interested in the lift and yeah, Jenkins had read the line outside, out perfectly, just needed a boost from behind. No, it's not. <clears throat> take another look at that in just a moment or two as Mickey Young looks to clear, but he's found only Hammersley. Ooh. And um, he's pinballing inside that 15 metre channel and it's set up for Cairns. Here comes Aidan Davis. Oof, Yendel. Punched over by Ludlow. Skinner. Just a suggestion that Ben Hammersley found the touchline with his left boot a moment or two ago. Let's have another look at that line out, Ben. Well, just if, if you're taking them on, you don't take on Jenkins at the front. So he's gambling, I'm going to go back. And there's just no interest in the lift from Tuima there. Even if he doesn't back onto him, a boost there puts massive pressure on the hooker on his own 22. Just a, a switch off. Okay, time off, top down. And there's the uh, the edge of the boot touching the whitewash just um, a moment or two ago. Then we'll shift, we'll shift ben Hammersley yeah. though did uh, did really well subsequent to that to drive over the gain line. As uh, I think we're going to see some replacements on the field fairly shortly, Ben. Sorry. Some of those impact players yeah. that you were talking about. Game needs energy. Really needs energy, he's just felt a little bit flat. I'll be honest, Lewis. Extra their opportunity bomb just before the half, and this opening almost it's nine minutes of the, the second half just haven't seen a lot happen, really. Yeah, it's a box kick in, not a lot of accuracy. It's not, it's not so much that the defences are massively on top, we, we've seen some big tackles going in, but it's just been so comfortable. If you then put on to a comfortable defence that's just relaxed, someone like, I guess, an, an Ollie Woodburn or, or someone that's just new and a different challenge, suddenly he just might spot that gap that's not happening at the moment. Crouch! On the a variety of options on the table here for the Chiefs. Faye Boso has just tucked himself in behind Harvey Skinner. And they break left now. Cairns, Hawkins. 
well held by Young. Picked up by Davis, tackle made by Thomas. Change of plan from Harvey Skinner. Joe Hawkins is charged with carrying it up again. And Wyatt, who's very elusive and has made excellent ground with the help of Ethan Roots and Co. Lovely tip on from Vermeulen to Tuima. Slithers on an extra meter or so, and no release. Gloucester have failed to release the tackle player. Punch forwards for Hammersley. That's tough. That's tough. Tuima's still moving into him, isn't he? Yeah, no, it's right. He doesn't have that clear release. You could, could say that Tuima went makes, again a little bit, but I think he's right. He's got the end come off, yeah. Yeah, spot Here. on from Tempest. So, opportunity of points, but into the corner they go. Chief style, this is what they do. Yeah. They like to ride that wave of momentum wherever possible. And they're seven or eight metres out. Yeah, not quite the accuracy in the kick, but can they take it a bit further with the drive than they would have wanted to? They're still not in a great position there, but they'll try and block the ball from coming back. Spivas just changed his bind there to get on the ball carrier. Now, all those Gloucester players are staying firmly put. You'll be lucky if you see the ball from here, I suspect, but maybe someone wearing black has his hands on it. Gloucester have won the decision. Ben, that's quite a peculiar tactic there from Gloucester, shifting the whole way round, almost joining them all from Exeter's side. How do you manage that, their momentum, whilst keeping Exeter the ball one, up two, and not three, over the try line? The Come real on. interest here is, Exeter did Exeter to pull that over? Because if you've got no one in front of you, but you know the ball's not coming out of the back, why would you pull your own ball over? But was there a panic there? I don't know. Did they just trip? The referee obviously saw something. Brilliant execution. You need your nine bossing the referee a little bit, telling him what's happening. Let's see how this goes down. There's knees on the floor. It's definitely dark socks there, so I think he's got it absolutely spot on. But that communication hasn't come from the back. Oh, no, it wasn't dark. I'll tell you who pulled it over. It was Clement. He's got his socks rolled down. I think. He's got dark socks underneath. And dark socks underneath. <laughs> he has, look. At the back there, at the back of the scrum. They were the knees that I saw drop. Got away with it there, Clement. Under the cover of almost darkness. <laughs> so a whole new front row deployed by Rob Baxter. Nika Abuladze, the Georgian loosehead, Dan Frost, the hooker, and Josh Yosefa Scott on for CO Yendel and Painter. And a, a scrum penalty immediately to Gloucester. Well, they're just a, a bit too early on the shove. And um, Cherry and White might just have got out of jail for the time being. Barton does the necessary. Not a, a huge amount of yeah, ground gain, but... In terms of geography, uh, and altogether a better part of the field as far as Gloucester are concerned. Let's have a word with Rob Baxter, the uh, Chiefs Director of Rugby. A five-point margin, Rob, with uh, with half an hour still to play. Game very much still in the balance. What, what's going to make the difference, do you think? Well, somebody, and I, you know, and I hope it's us, you know, really taking charge of the game and really, you know, it's it just feels like that, doesn't it? It just feels like... We're having, mo we're like, particularly at the minute, we're having moments and we're not quite seeing them off. I think there was, I'm not, I'm not quite sure what happened at the mall there. There seemed to be a few things going on, but in the end, we've got to be better than that and make it very obvious and very clear that we're in control of things. And it's a bit the same at the scrum. You know, you've got to make things very clear and very obvious that you're the, the ones in charge. And we're not quite doing that. And I think that that's the key to the game. Is I, I think a team are going to make it clear they're in charge at some stage, and, and that'll be the winning and losing of the game. Rob, we're getting to the, the phase of the game now where we're expecting to see the replacements come on. Does your game plan stay the same throughout the game, or when you bring fresh blood on, do you change it at all? Yeah, no, we're, we're pretty much set on how we want to play. You know, we, we, we know what we... We, we should know how we want to do. If we try and chop and change too much, that's when you start to get a little bit disrupted. Ideally, what you want is 
you want you want your bench to be very fluid in what they do and add energy to what you're doing. And I think they'll do that. You know, our, our front row have, have typically this season done very well for us as we've changed them over and give us an energy and has given us an energy, an increased energy in the end of the game. And that's what we're going to want to see now, particularly around particularly around set piece. Brilliant, Rob. Thanks for your time. Thank you very much. Energy, the key word. Yeah, it's lacking it. Just need that spark from somewhere. And in terms of your point, Caterpillar Rut can be discussed and they can work out, but this process, referees, how, how long have they got to box kick a ball? Technically, it's five, five seconds. seconds, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, just start the clip. But uh, it, is, it is stretched on many, many occasions, isn't it? So back into the middle third we go, and uh, Hawkins is looking to try to drive that over the head of... Mickey Young, who backpedals well, calls for the mark. Mark. And actually, that's what Gloucester do want to do. I know they're five points down, but they want to be within a score, and they will probably want to slow the game down, and then all the okay, pressure goes on to Exeter to do something to get okay. away, and that's where Gloucester start to capitalise on mistakes, they'll hope. It's not found. Wyatt found, and in comes Carreras at high speed. But he's had the ball taken off him by Skinner. All within the ten. Get but that's not terribly smart for all Exeter. It's not against Skinner, is it? It's against Multiple those forwards players, that pick, didn't get out of the ten metre diameter. If you're in an offside position, you can't stay within ten metres of the ball. You have to back off. It's given a, a little opening here to Barton and Gloucester as we see George Skivington decide on some replacements. Three new players arriving for the front row. Harry Elrington will replace Michael Vivas, Santi Sosino for George McGuigan at hooker, and Kirill Gatovsev for Fraser Balmain. Exeter on the line, please. Thank you. Time on. <laughs> They'll bring it in. They'll bring it in. Dan, don't go early, mate. Stay two. And here's Sassino, Argentine international. Missed out on the World Cup. Uh, landing the early dart, finding another Puma in Alamano, and a steaming Thorley coming careering into the 22. Set up nicely for Young. Sassino on the ball again. Good press defensively from the Chiefs, once again they're right up there and Sassino has got it away, Carreras to Thorley and Gloucester find the mark, very very smart thinking from Gloucester in the face of some extremely heavy pressure from the Chiefs defensive line and Thorley picking his line, picking his moment energy and quality that's exactly what we got on that set piece play there look at the speed of how everything is working it's Ollie Thorley over the gain line the urgency to get round the corner X the Chiefs get up hard get up high but they control the ball and this sweeping back here I speak about wingers working with fly halves that is gorgeous sympathetic not too far away from Carreras, not testing his skills too much. That is as nice a pass, offload, call it whatever you want, but it's the architect for this bit of space, and Olu Thorley, who started it, finishes it. Well, it's a great finish from Olu Thorley, who's done so much in those last two passages to set up this situation, but what about that little tip on from Atkinson? Deft. How good. And George Barton is denied by the uprights, and we are level on the scoreboard at 12 points each. I think you've mentioned, Ali, the hunger of Thorley, but just watch him carry here, and then keep your eye on him after the ball goes away from this, this breakdown. See how hungry he is to get back on his feet, get back into position, and how late he sees this before he gets the ball. He's turning his back there, the ball's given to him. They're the slight differences in attitude that get you a try when actually you know some players might have taken their time getting back up into position I'll tell you what Gloucester desperately needed that but so did the 15,000 here as well the game needed it someone's gone after this game can we see the first draw of the season it's fantastic all day hasn't it yeah 
Well, it's been nip and tuck throughout. But still 22 minutes remaining. Ball one by Jenkins of Exeter. Release, release. Vermeulen lays it up. Nice from Roots. Skinner to Wyatt. Lovely balance runner, isn't he? Yeah, really nice. Always putting doubt into defenders' minds, hence why we often win so many challenges. Cairns using Hammersley. I'm not what? sure he'll appreciate that pass particularly. Slade. Oh, what a gorgeous delay that was on the delivery for Wyatt. Another excellent line cut by Hawkins. All one off low too many and Clements away for Gloucester. Another a laboured trundle, that one from Freddie Thomas. Didn't want to get outside of the 22, knew the kick was coming, wanted to leave the option. Put himself under pressure, shallow ruck here. Tawima's going to want to get after him. Decided to keep this ball in play. Yeah, it's gone straight down the throat of Wyatt. And he's shaken off the challenge of Barton. Cairns. Yusufa Scott looking for that one-handed offload. Skinner in field. Davis to Jenkins. Cairns again. Tackle, release, release. To inject that little bit of life for the Exeter Chiefs. A penalty here to the home side. Tackle, you've been stripped the ball. I've called tackle nears the floor, 16 then strips the ball. It's gone against Santi Sassino. Thank you, close call. And uh, with the scores tied, it falls to Henry Slade to have a crack at this from 45 metres out. Post is called, shot clock is on. He's on his knees for a long time, isn't he? Referee had shouted at him. There's your mark. Mark's there, Henry, mate, yeah? Perfect. So Slade will be assisted here by Joe Hawkins. <laughs> this would be Slade's longest kick of the campaign to date. Clean strike. And Chiefs in front. 18 and a half minutes to play. A three point buffer. And Stu Townsend arriving for the Exeter Chiefs at Scrum Half, replacing Tom Cairns. And a replacement for Rus Tuima as well in the form of Lewis Pearson, I assume. <laughs> it is Pearson who has it on the deck for the Chiefs. Good to see Townsend back, his first appearance of the season, the scrum half. He's been plagued by uh, injuries in the last couple of campaigns, but at his best, he's a, a proper scrapping nine. Great value to watch. It's tough, isn't it? Very, very competitive. Backwards. And should provide a, a decent old challenge for Gloucester to keep quiet. Barton to Atkinson, keeps it alive well that Barton is having to deal with Joe Hawkins. Six. And a push from Roots. Meaning that Clear post Exeter number six. are marched backwards. Samet flew through that ruck off his feet. I think it was him that had had a shove in the back, maybe. So once again, just those little errors in in the middle third, the discipline letting them down this time, allowing Gloucester back in. The, the pressure's good, but as Hugo was talking about before, it's that speed of transfer and the quality of the pass which gives Exeter, who are happy, there's Samet getting the push from Roots, but gives Exeter 
that ability just to keep moving forward. So they get high in the eye line of the ball players. And then if it's slow and ponderous how it goes across the field, they can just keep taking those steps and catch Gloucester in behind. Ludlow again with the line-out ball. Gloucester needing something here. Barton bustling forwards. Lovely from the scrum half. Clements had the option to his left. Freddie Thomas was screaming at him. Stephen Varney, who's come on at nine for Young. And the Carreras directly behind the ruck, potentially contemplating three points, but now moving back into that more regular attacking shape. Clement, Barton, crossfield they go. Zamed is after this. Back goes Skinner. And uh, he stays in field. Not on the ball, Not on the ball lads. Stays out of that in goal area. Not yet. Really good kick, though. This next one needs to get off the pitch. Townsend sends it long, and oh, what a kick that is from Stu Townsend. The roar of the Sandy Park crowd tell you how much they enjoyed that one from the returning nine. Absolutely pin perfect forward to get your head up from that breakdown expecting the line out perhaps to be just outside the 22 gives you a huge boost huge huge boost really good from Townsend Time on. and off comes Ethan Roots not sure how straight that was stolen anyway and a first blast here for Ross Vincent. Another extreme talent in uh, in the Chiefs' ranks. That's gone out on the full this time. Extra complaining that the player that put the pressure on Townsend forced the error was in an offside position, but Ian Tempest doesn't want to be told how to referee this game. He's penalised them for back chat. Ben, you're spot on. 23, please, HIA. 23. Oh, that's Ollie Woodburn, who's only just come on. 23, HIA. So he's coming off the independent doctor. I've got four players waving their arms at me. I warned you in the first half. 23 needs to go off. The independent doctor's told me. So the number 23, are you? He needs to go off. The independent doctor's told me he needs to go off. Okay. It's the independent match day doctor. So Woodburn for uh, a head injury assessment. Appear to be rather reluctantly, but it's not a decision that the player gets to take, of course. Stop pinching your arms on me. Rightly so. George Barton just trying to creep forwards. But he has. That's the mark there. Every, every fly half does that. <laughs> yeah. Walk forward three or four paces. He's measured that nicely. That is tight ish. It's um, what, eight, nine metres out. This is the Ollie Woodburn incident. He's clattered into Jack Clement, and the the impact is a big one. Side of the head, isn't it? Dropped away quickly. No harm in checking that at all. Hold. Sassino. Ball. <laughs> to Freddie Clark and the drive is good from Gloucester and this could be decisive down comes the mall out comes the arm of Ian Tempest opportunity on the short side but uh, to that open side they go and Seb Atkinson is driven to the ground still playing with an advantage and Reece Samet pirouettes and steps and scores Gloucester needing a spark Turning to their winger, who delivers in spades. You mentioned, Hugo, those sparks that this guy can bring during the game. He's not involved all the time, but there's just one or two moments in a game where everything else seems to be going slower for him and he can just read things perfectly and then puts his foot down on the acceleration but the spin on this pass to take out the defender absolutely superb good carry from Atkinson keeps his leg driving Barton comes back round on the sweep which maybe takes a bit of the eyes of the 
Exeter defenders, but how he takes that ball, shows his back to the opposition and just rolls away from Townsend, accelerates, and then all the panic of those Exeter defenders coming across, he knows he can wrong foot them, steps hard off his right and slides in. Well, well, well. Oh, that's so good. That is very, very good from Barton. He's been kicking really well this season. And how crucial might those extra points be? So Stu Townsend, he flies up out of the line. You mentioned the word panic. Well, that's what Reece Summit and the change of direction brings. He flies up at the line, trying to solve it on his own. Doesn't get the ball or the man. Reece Summit takes both, as well as the try and the lead. 19 points to 15. Gloucester lead Reece. at Sandy Park. Just to, to put this in context, should they go on to secure the victory? It's almost nine years since they beat Exeter here. Varney clears and clears well. Okay. So we are. What a bounce back this would be. <laughs> Given everything that the Chiefs have been up to here on their home patch in the early part of this season. Four point lead now puts the pressure on Chiefs to deliver something they have to deliver their first phase though if they're gonna have any chance but it might just spark them into life Will Hayden Wood is on that's his kick that's been, uh, on, taken in by Barton everybody there for on site and Clements with open spaces in front of him had the choice to move it to Got Atkinson left. took the contact now then Barton goes wide again Driving onwards through Elrington inside the 22. Again, there were men to the left. Varney recycles. Thomas to Clark. And onwards once more. The attempted jackal from Tommy Wyatt. Gloucester piling on the pressure. They're just not quite as clinical as they need to be at the moment. So much good build-up work. But now potentially... The killer blow from Sassino. The inside ball, and Alamano's close. The Pumas together. Fished out. Carreras. Clement once again. Lads. What an excellent tackle that was from Townsend, but they're through regardless. Atkinson has it. That is the bonus point try. And remarkably, the Cherry and Whites are bouncing back here at Sandy Park. Chaos off this charge down, but Gloucester's reaction to be able to try and see the space, they could have scored this three times, but how about this for a take and an offload, and then it comes down to the decision-making, trying to hunt some really good space. They go to the left, end up going to the right, that tip on pass ends up breaking the dam, and then once again, Gloucester do make hard work of it to try and finish this try. But at the end, just a small bit of composure from Seb Atkinson. Could have been finished then, just one extra pass and then a pick and go. That final metre, Atkinson has been really tidy, hasn't he, all game. And that is a quality, quality try. Sucker punched. How is this scoreline, this scoreline? Said at the beginning of the game. Gloucester started really well last week, but it's more important how you finish the game. Wow, what a finish they've had so far. Just wide this time, but 24 points to 15, a nine-point buffer with eight and a half minutes remaining. George Skivington is blinking, I would argue, potentially even in disbelief. He knows he's got a good squad, he knows their capabilities, but did he really believe they could come to Sandy Park and get a victory today? The strength of this run from the Chiefs has been remarkable. They've won their last 10 here, unbeaten in, all, in uh, more than a year. I don't mind Hugo saying that they didn't quite finish it off on three occasions. He's absolutely right, but they didn't panic, and that's, that's the great thing. And, 
for the first time today, we've seen them playing how they played in the first half yeah. against Bath when they had that fluidity and pace on their attack. And it's almost indefensible, isn't it, when they play with that much speed? And the Chiefs' line-out has gone awry. Dan Frost is fuming, but Gloucester have stolen it. And very much in keeping with this big old momentum swing, they move upfield. Faye Wavosa coming, clattering through. That was knocked forwards by Atkinson. And we can head to the touchline and we can find Sarah, who's with Mickey Young. Big old penalty here to the Chiefs. Goodness, do they need that. Right on halfway. And a little more than five minutes remaining. Have they got time to overhaul this deficit, Hugo? That nine points, first job, obviously, to get within losing bonus point territory, but they'll be after much more than that. Yeah, it's that rush defence, isn't it? From Exeter, it's been good at times. Maybe just switched off in, in the middle part of the game and Gloucester came back at them. Now they've been sparked back into life, but is it too late? Frost once again the line-out malfunctions. Once again Gloucester are onto it through Clark. And he gotta hand it to the Cherry and Whites for the competition in the air. It was an area that faltered for the Chiefs at the Saints last week, but here they've given the ball back, Gloucester, and Exeter had their tails up once more, here's Van Eulen. This match not done by a long chalk. Out it comes for Davis. Townsend. Quick ball here, could be interesting. Frost, clawed down by Barton. Terrific finish, this. Van Eulen again, just the man for this occasion. Townsend. Davis, carry after carry, tackle after tackle from Gloucester. Townsend, just a, a small chink of light that he thought might profit the Chiefs. Here's Abuladze, who's taken early and very low by Sosino. Most phases that either side have been through to this point in the game. They've given up the penalty. Chiefs pouring forwards. Ross Vincent, the next to drive onwards. A second advantage. Jenkins, Yosefa Scott. Skinner with the clear out. Vincent again driving powerfully to the line. Held by Harris. The ball still available for the Exeter Chiefs. Over the top for the score. Acrobatic stuff from Stu Townsend. Breathing life into Exeter Hopes. Dynamism in the carry. And the athleticism from the scrum half. I love that from Stu Townsend because as he's waiting for the ball to come back, he spotted it. And he's just praying that no one stands up. Because he knows exactly what he's going to do as soon as the ball gets delivered on its plate. Could see his eyes looking. A couple of the Gloucester players a little bit slow back to their feet, maybe just trying to mark that pick and go around the side. 
Townsend had already decided no one gets up, I'm going straight over the top. The what a score and what a f last three minutes we've got on our hands. Through it goes from Henry Slade. And with two and a half minutes remaining, two points separate these sides. Well, Frost have thought they'd done their job. You see Frost fuming, it's his third line-out miss on the trot. But then, Daffy Jenkins, captain's performance, gets the charge down, gets the ball back for his team, and Townsend finishes off the job. What do you do if you're extra now off this, off this restart? To try and keep the ball for two minutes? Because they're going to kick long and kick very deep into this corner. Or do you kick to compete, try and get the ball back? Kick the ball. Hope Slade. you get another go. Yeah, decides to give it a good old hike. A bit of confusion in the backfield. Carreras takes charge. Now there's a bit of grass in front of you. And now the attack. Harvey Skinner. Little hop and a skip. And up to halfway and beyond. Clear out is strong. Townsend's to Yosefa Scott. The Chiefs need every one of their supporters behind them right now. Townsend again. Wyatt. Three men running off him to the left. <laughs> Looking for that penalty. They've got one. Chris Harris singled out. How costly might that prove to Gloucester? It's 40 metres out, it's 15 metres in from the touchline. Harris is and all okay. eyes will rest on Henry Slade, you suspect, from here. It's Elrington. Elrington gets trapped in there, can't roll away, and Harris, as a result, gets the benefit. Just watch Elrington there, makes the tackle, but then doesn't manage to get clear. And Harris then goes in, it stops Jenkins making the clear out. We've seen those decisions given for the last two seasons. What a moment for Chris Harris. The agonies. They've come so close. They played so well in this second 40 in particular. But now everything rests with Henry Slade. This would be comfortably his longest kick of the campaign. Clock in the red. Do or die. He turns quick! And the clench of the fist! The Chiefs have nicked it! From nine points down, Exeter have beaten Gloucester at the death. The resolve, the character of this young group, something to behold. On the ropes, seemingly down and out, they scrambled the win. Full-time, Exeter 25, Gloucester 24.